why don't those fall off the seat on a shining bed of stars? Look at that, ready? He's gonna take a selfie on the count of three, light those phones up. One, two, three. Oh, excellent. That's so cool. Now, Richard, can we have you stand right here? Take two photos of a new crowd shot right here. I want to remind you that this is Richard Dean Anderson. I'm kidding. Hello? A little busy, yeah? Oh, about uh, 2,000 of my closest friends. I'm kidding. It's a countdown. It's a plot twist. What do I do? Just take the picture. There. Okay, start the clock over again. I've been got dicking around. Sorry. Welcome to Salt Lake City. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so far, I haven't met a person I don't like in Salt Lake City. Over yet. I swear to you, it, to a man, woman, and child, you've all been. I mean, I've done a few of these things, these um, cons. <laughs> and so far, I know. Um, some of them can be pretty rancid. If you've traveled around, you, some of you may know. But uh, this one is is. From my perspective and watching what you guys have had to deal with or get to deal with, it seems to be pretty smooth. Am I right? It's the greatest convention in the world, according to Stan Lee. And he does not say that to everybody. <laughs> okay, what do you guys want to do? I think they want to ask you questions, right? And talk. Yeah, let's just get down to that, right? Yeah. Hi. Um, Richard, as a dentist, um, my patients always try to fix their own teeth and they say, Oh, I have MacGyvered it. <laughs> how, do you feel about, how do you feel about people using your character as a verb? MacGyvering things. Wait. Let me understand this. You have a dentist or you're a dentist? I have a dentist. And you MacGyver thing? No, no, my patients try to fix their own teeth. I'm like, what did you do? And they said, I MacGyvered it. <laughs> MacGyver something in their teeth? Yes, yes, they try to fix it. Oh my god! <laughs> I know. Thank you. Oh god, that's sick. <laughs> Set them straight, Doc. <laughs> Thank you. How does it how does it make you feel though to have have your character part of the lexicon to MacGyver something? Uh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> no, it um, actually what happened uh, initially was that our uh, producer and somebody from Paramount um, that we were working for at the time um, approached. Uh, Webster's uh, Collegiate Dictionary and um, uh, to submit MacGyver or MacGyverisms as a, an adjective, I guess that would be? No, that would be a... Well, to MacGyverize, yeah, but MacGyverism is a noun, right? Thank you. I'm so proud. Anyway, we, we submitted... Uh, <laughs> the MacGyver French thing uh, to Webster's and they, because um, th every 10 years they, and it's less now, I guess it's every five or three years, 
because they're so, you kids are making up so many words. We, us older kids can't keep up. But anyway, they, we were two weeks late and it didn't make the, the first uh, round of, of dictionaries. I understand it's in there now. Yeah. Is it? They owe me money. <laughs> something for her? Does she want something? Oh! It's not hungry or anything? Mother. <laughs> Please, go ahead. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, hello, I was wondering if you could guest star in any TV show, past or present, what would it be? Good question. Good. Oh. Should have, should have submitted that so I could think about it. <laughs> um. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know. I, did, I was over in England shooting MacGyver uh, TV movies, um, and Doctor Who was in full swing, and we shared the same casting office. So that's as much as I know about. Mr. Doctor Who. <laughs> it, it seems to be popular. They keep killing off lead actors though, right? I can't keep up. Um, a TV or film? Film? Uh, some, something animated. <laughs> I'm a big animation fan, and gosh, you can sit up in your underwear to do that stuff. <laughs> well, who said, yeah? <laughs> I'm 67 years old. I've got roles, kid. It's not a pretty sight. Yeah. <laughs> you got me curious now. Changed them last week. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Throughout the evening, I'll, I'll think about the show that I'd like to be on. But let's move on now. Young yes. lady? What is your favorite TV show to play in? Do you know him? <laughs> I think he just... Is that the same question or no? No, I think she means all the shows that you've been in. What's your favorite? Oh, is that what you mean? Hmm. Well, many of you will not be familiar with Legend. Yeah, slight portion of the room. We did 12, I think 12 episodes of a thing called Legend where I had so much fun playing this character that was, it was a period western, and um, got to play this nuts character who drank and smoked cigars and womanized and wore striped underwear. And, um, but it was, it was so much fun to play, that big mustache and got to roll around in the dirt. It was just a great departure from anything else I had done. Um, you haven't seen it, have you? No. Was that with John Delancey? Yes, yeah. it was. Um, but that was my favorite one. Um, one that you would know? Probably MacGyver. <laughs> However, Stargate was so much fun. Should have gone there first. Uh, it, it is, Stargate was so much fun because, um, in part, because I had someone to talk to. It was, got lonely doing MacGyver after a while. Um, 
but uh, yeah, Stargate had great people to work with, phenomenal crew, and, and the cast members that I worked with primarily were just, I mean, we're all friends. Uh, we don't hang out, you know, I wouldn't want to go that far. <laughs> so I keep my distance. No, they're all great people, and, um, and we had a ball, so, okay. <laughs> Of course, there was General Hospital. I was scared to death doing General Hospital. I had no idea what I was doing. Please. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Hello, my dear. Yes, The Simpsons was my favorite show. There you go. I'd like to know if any of the fabulous props that you've been able to work with ever came home with you. Um, one. And she was... She was a puppy, you dummies. I guess a puppy wouldn't count as a prop, right? Co-star, <laughs> more like a co-star. No, we, we had a dog um, during MacGyver who, no, it was during um, the other one, thank you. <laughs> Stay close. <laughs> and uh, if you count that as a prop, that was my favorite ones. I took it home for like a night, but had to give it back. Because I was at work all the time. I couldn't take care of the dog that I took from work. So I just brought it back to work and I kept him there. <laughs> thank you. Please. Mr. Anderson. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you for the enjoyment you brought us all throughout the years. And I have a very interesting... I was a substitute teacher for a year and a half and I created what is called the MacGyver IQ. How do you feel about that? About what? <laughs> what can you do with what you know? Well, I like the idea. The concept is great. Um, thank God I had great writers. <laughs> because I don't think I could... Uh, um, real life or fantasy? This is... Thank you. Um, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you teach this? Microphone. <laughs> he can still talk. He's a... <laughs> As a substitute teacher, I wanted the kids not just to go for the grade. I wanted them to go for the information yeah. so that they could apply what they were learning, not just simply get the grade. The MacGyver IQ. What can I you love do? That. Right now? <laughs> My dad was a teacher, and he was a big proponent back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. and um, He was a big proponent of... Uh, uh, digging deeper or going further than you have to go. You, whether you got uh, questions wrong on a, on a test or close but not quite, as long as you went at least that far and it tried to extend the thought within a question uh, or a, an entire test, getting a little esoteric here, but it's, um, I love the concept. God bless you. Keep it up. Thank you. Keep it up. Yes, dear. Hi. Yes, this is going to sound like sound like a really random question, but it's for my boyfriend. Did you have an idea of any of an awareness of how big of MacGyver was in Bangladesh? Mm. Apparently, you have a huge fan base over there, and you're his childhood hero. So. I was just talking about that with someone, re like, within the last 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> Has he asked if I uh, if I was uh, popular in Sri Lanka? And I said, um, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, we, no, it was Bangladesh. And so it came to me like a whirlwind. <laughs> like, it's a rare occurrence when I can remember that far back. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did know that actually. In fact, I tried desperately at some point to go there and never was able. It was, uh, it's actually on a bucket list for now.
that in Antarctica. He would have came, but he broke his leg, and so I'm up here instead. So. Okay, well, watch your legs. <laughs> Great I'll socks. Let him know you said no. <laughs> How does that feel to be recognized all over the world? I mean, is that kind of eerie or strange to you that people will come up anywhere and say, hey, you're MacGyver, you're Jack O'Neill? Um, well, I don't have to be reminded of that, but it, it's, I guess it's okay because, well, what's happened, um, the hot years are, have cooled a bit, so it's like I can go through life now and there'll be a double take here or there or someone, but what I've, what I really appreciate about the, I guess, the celebrity aspect of all this is the fans that have followed me and who dig deeper to find out what I'm like, uh, really like. <laughs> Hell, I don't even know what that is. But um, everyone has been, as long as people are polite, I'll give you, you know, all the time you need. Um, but that's been my experience, is that everybody kind of who's gotten to know me, done research or observed, um, they respect my space, uh, for the most part. Except for one of you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not that conscious of it. They're conscientious about my, well, I should be more conscientious about my behavior because that element of celebrity is there, and I apparently, the celebrity type is held to a slightly higher standard, uh, morally, um, physically, certainly. You've, you know, a facelift I've had. <laughs> Wait, there should be more laughter there because yeah. it's quite think, off. If this is a facelift, then boy, did I get gypped. <laughs> But, um, what was the question? <laughs> Here, you ask one. I was wondering if you could take anything from the Stargate universe, whether it be the Stargate, weapons, ships, or even Atlantis, what would you choose and why? Oh, God, it's take the Stargate. <laughs> Immediately. Put it up in my backyard. Invite the neighbors. <laughs> Some of them I wouldn't tell how to get back. <laughs> Common sense. Hi. You want to talk? Hi. My question is, what was your favorite tool on your Swiss Army knife in MacGyver? Well, um, You'll understand this someday. <laughs> and there was a time when I used it a lot in my earlier days. The corkscrew. <laughs> came in pretty handy most weekends. We <laughs> weekends. <laughs> so, well, what about yours? Do you have a favorite? You love them. That's not fair. You can't make me. What's your favorite? Just. Oh, you like the all. Is that what you said? Oh, you love them all. I love them all too. Poking holes in my belt. And... No, I'm just... Too far? Too much? Too soon? It's very rare to get all jokes like that. Carpentry humor. Yeah. Please. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Taylor, um, and I was wondering how many uh, Red Swiss Army knives you went through ah. on MacGyver, unless it was just one throughout the whole one. A lot. <laughs> I really did, because um, over a period of time, um, we kind of got to know what we were doing, and I, you know, it was all kind of rhythmic and setting up shots, moving around. So I had a lot of like lazy time, downtime. 
So I tried to, t I taught myself how to uh, throw a knife, how to <laughs> stick a knife in a board or something at a distance. If you've ever held a Swiss Army knife, it has no balance <laughs> whatsoever. You, it's virtually impossible at any great distance. Um, so I went through at least a gross. <laughs> you know how many that is? Guess. 144. You're right. 100, at least 144, because uh, my prop master told me that one. He also gave me a box of uh, assorted, because um, we had different sizes depending on what kind of shot we needed. We cheat like that, <laughs> but they don't stick very well. <laughs> Can I break them? Please. How you doing? My name is Philip. I'm a big fan. Um, I was wondering, are you going to be part of the reboot Stargate? The, the what now? Christopher said that there's possibly a reboot of Stargate. I was wondering if you're going to be part of it. You know, you're going to have to ask Chris about that because <laughs> I, I I hear that. I you know, and well, I hear it again, like coming here, but um, I haven't heard anything. I mean, I honestly don't know. Um, I I. Apparently, if anybody does know, it's you? Yes, I do. Tony, I, I buddy. talked with Dean Devlin just a little bit ago. Uh, I think they were toying with the idea of Stargate Origins, which is the story of Catherine, the, the person that, whose father found the Stargate. But I don't know if that's going to, you know, include everybody in the... Because you guys time travel, too, so... Well, well, it doesn't include me. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody's even approached... Did you check your mail? I don't know how, <laughs> but you may have already gotten the part. Yeah, we may be done shooting for a while. <laughs> Please. So my name is James, and the question I'm asking, so there's a new TV series, this is MacGyver, and I wanted to know if you've seen it or... or Heard of it? Oh, I've heard of it. <laughs> I don't know if you all heard it, but he's asking about the new MacGyver um, show. Good response over there. I like that. <laughs> that was me. Um, uh, good question. Serious question. Serious answer. I I really f I don't like it. It's, 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 there you go. Well, but for a reason, there's, you know, ego aside and all that, you know, well, why not me? That, that kind of stuff, that's over, <laughs> believe me. But I, in watching some of the episodes, it's, it's not a MacGyver, it's not. It's just, I've become fond of describing it as a cop show with an iconic title. And because, I don't know, his partner's shooting everybody and killing everybody, and there's like, it's just all happens way too fast, and it's like you're asked to believe, or you're asked to fill in a lot of the blanks, whereas what we did was we showed you those blanks, those steps along the way to solve the problem. They're just going right to, you know, he picks up a bunch of toothpicks or whatever, and all of a sudden he's got a, a hula skirt. Is that association? I have no idea. But you know what I mean, you don't see the process. And we prided ourselves on, this is why it was such a, a, not a pain, it was a joy, but it was really complicated to shoot MacGyver because you, we had a new concept of a uh, TV hero who didn't use a gun to solve that problem. You saw him see the problem, see him see elements of the solution, see him collecting it, putting it together, and then you see him, you know, weaving whatever uh, toy he needed to, to solve that problem. You don't see any of that on uh, the new MacGyver. Like I said, it's an, I guess, action-adventure cop show. Um, in my view, and I, I don't wish them ill, I, you know, whatever 
um, success you can have, go for it. But uh, I, I just don't like it. Hi, you. Hello, sir. <laughs> um, out of all ten seasons of SG One, what would you, what can you remember being your favorite Jack and Sam moment? Makeout scenes. <laughs> Lord, how can you even ask such a question? Got to be paid to be on set, making out with a babe like her. She was married, right? No, uh, it. Yeah, those are always fun. And any scenes that I would have with um, what's his name, uh, that Daniel. One, that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> were terrific as well. Not for that reason. <laughs> but because you don't have to get close to that. But it was, um, but he and I developed a really nice rapport, a nice banter rhythm. Um, as with uh, Amanda as well, but God, making out with her was just... <laughs> professional, mind you. <laughs> So not she kept having a saying, no tongue. I said, no tongue. No, I was saying that to her. She's... Well, why, do you have another moment in mind? I was, just, I was just going to mention at the end of the episode, window of opportunity, when you hand in your resignation to kiss her. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> What'd I do? <laughs> hand in my resignation to her? To no. General Hammond. To Hammond. So you could kiss her. Oh! <laughs> cool moment. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Now that I think back, <laughs> that was a well-written uh, moment. Yeah, you're right. But as a totally lascivious human being, making out was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, kitty. <laughs> you kitty, kitty, kitty. But I'm already here. <laughs> okay, so Colonel, I have a question for you. For the Groundhog's Day episode, did you learn how to juggle way before the episode, or did you learn just for the episode how to juggle? Um, I learned how to juggle by, well, like when I moved to California, I had a distant aunt or uncle or some, something like that <laughs> that lived in um, Studio City, California. They had a backyard that had a shack, literally a shack, um, that they let me like sleep in, live in. And uh, I shared it with a big old box turtle. It was about that, that big. It was great. I mean, we, we get along well. Um, didn't drink. He didn't drink. I don't know why. But, um, what was I saying? Where was I? You lived with a big turtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Juggling. <laughs> and I had you going. Anyway, also in this backyard were um, uh, uh, grapefruit trees and orange trees. And it was a great place to, you know, if you're going to move to California, find somebody with a shack and orange trees in the backyard to live in. I got really healthy, eating all this vitamin C, but I also, you know, learned how to, uh, just by figuring it out and watching, and I also had a buddy that had uh, moved to California a year prior, and he knew how to juggle and just gave me some pointers. And th the rest is, if I went on, he'd be bored to tears. <laughs> but it, what happens was that when you're learning, you drop them a lot. So everything that I would drop eventually would split open. I'd have to eat it. 
<laughs> Hence, my good health. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Richard. Sir. Uh, talking about back, going back to the concoctions, uh, your MacGyver years, I was wondering, during that time, did they ever come to you and say, Richard, this is how you're going to save the day, this is what you're going to build, this is how you're going to do it, and you thought, yeah, that's never going to work. My favorite example of the credibility uh, factor was uh, MacGyver's, uh, some bad guy locks MacGyver into a, a, a jail cell out in the desert by the airport. <laughs> Details. And so he locks me in there and um, I, there's no way to get out. What's he going to do? Um, what we had established on the way in, there were some things that you see that we'll come back to, obviously. Um, one of them was a horse tied to the thing, and there was a bicycle, and a bucket of something else, and uh, dot, dot, dot. So MacGyver's got to get, you know, somehow get away and do stuff. So what he does, I'll fast forward. Um, <laughs> Takes me his belt and probably something else, uh, item of clothing. Makes a rope, uh, throws it, and loops, somehow miraculously loops. The <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, gets the bicycle and drags it close to him, and he, um, he starts breaking it down, breaking it apart. And there was a time when we did, or I had to do all these voiceovers to explain everything. It was just so insulting, I thought, to the audience because you can see what I'm doing, but there were some elements in retrospect that did need to be explained. This one, I, I swear to God, kept me laughing so long. Um, I get the bicycle in, I break it down, and the voiceover uh, basically... Um, instructs the audience that if the bicycle's made of magnesium, <laughs> and if another part of it's made from manganese, <laughs> by this time we're going, what? What are, what are you talking about? No bicycle's not made of, oh my God. Did anybody see that? Because I I was dying. And I had to voice it over with a straight face. So anyway, the, the, the idea was to, if it's made out of manganese or whatever, um, then you could use one of the pipes on the frame and another part of the frame pipe and... and hit the manganese onto the magnesium, whatever, and create a spark, and out of it you would have a blowtorch. <laughs> so I could cut through the bars and the jail. <laughs> That's my favorite episode. Anyway. Uh, I wanted to thank you for entertaining us over the years. I wanted to ask you, what happens to MacGyver and his son at the end of season seven? <laughs> like, where do they go, what happened? What well, do they, they drive off into the sunset. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> were... <laughs> he, uh, yeah, on our motorcycles, we drove off somewhere, and um, we disappeared for about, 35 years and then apparently came back with a new series on <laughs> CBS. <laughs> and, and he's lost his step or two, I guess. <laughs> now, I, we didn't answer that and I haven't really given much thought. You can fantasize whatever you want. That's part of the joy of an imagination. 
speaker. I wanted to ask, uh, was the mullet your idea? <laughs> yes. It happened somewhat accidentally. Um, I should share this. Um, I, I, always, I had always had long hair. I mean, since when the minute the Beatles came out and we hit the States in 64, 5, 3. Anyway, started getting, coming over there, I started having long hair. And it was a constant fight with my parents. Uh, well, my mom, anyway. My dad was you know, a man of humanities. and. My mother was an artist, so I couldn't understand why she wanted me to have a skin head. But that's uh, what they preferred. So anyway, when I get into junior high school I, and the Beatles came out, I let it go. Flash forward, still got long hair, I'm kind of, uh, and we're doing the early stages of MacGyver. And the weeks go by, we're doing more episodes. Guess what? Hair gets longer. It keeps going, going. But it started to get like this, like unmanageable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I kept having to fix it. It wouldn't match on camera. So I just, because I had to keep doing this and if it didn't match, we'd have to do it over again and if it fell. Anyway, so um, they, the, <laughs> The hairdresser um, cut the sides off so it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have to do that. But the back kept growing and they didn't, they didn't see fit to trim it up. Now you go so far with that, it becomes impossible to suddenly chop it off because things have to match and there's a, you know, a a sequence, a, an evolution um, to the character and his look and all that business. So uh, it, it was kind of an accident, and then I just didn't fight anything anymore. Henry Winkler, here's why it was so uh, blonde at times. Um, Henry Winkler came to me, and I'm going to say the word S-H-I-T, is that okay with you guys? <laughs> Henry Winkler um, came to me one point and said, <clears throat> said, Richard, would you mind if we put some highlights in your hair, and I get some highlights in there, because your hair is so brown, it looks like shit on a stick. <laughs> For which I thanked him. <laughs> but they put in some, uh, the, the first, the same guy that, made the accident cutting, made the accident in bleaching, and it was, I swear to God, it looked like Billy Idol for me. It's just, anyway, it's obvious that I care a lot about how my hair looks, but um, that, that's pretty much the evolution of that. And then, you know, there was Rod Stewart, there was um, the coach for the Kings at the time, uh, Boy, if anybody knew it in this crowd. Yeah. Um, and Barry Melrose, thank you. And then there was um, MacGyver. And that was kind of the springboard for one of the worst designed haircuts. <laughs> I mean, it worked during the 80s, but you know, we shot into the 90s and beyond. <laughs> if you see one today, anybody? Any, any mullets in the crowd? Anybody willing to admit? There is. I'm, our time is like we got 20 seconds left here. I'm sorry we don't have another question, but what? we no. don't. They, 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 there's, they're What's your question? <laughs> there, see? What a nice guy. Thank you very much, Mr. Anson. Anderson, I really appreciate it. I was just wondering what made you, what inspired you to be in the career that you chose? I mean, it's such a big career choice, and why? It's an old story. If you've heard it, stop me. 
But my father was a speech and English teacher and developed the humanities program at a high school in um, the suburban conference where I lived, Roseville, Minnesota. Actually, he was in Columbia Heights. Anyway, he started, the, he also directed school plays. So as a kid, I'd love to go with him for the rehearsals and, and you know, the after school rehearsals. And I'd sit in the, in the audience chairs, what are they called? Any of the seats? <laughs> and watch this, this intriguing behavior on this stage with lights on and people using voices that sound, yeah, I mean, it was just a really odd spectacle that fascinated me for some reason. And during one particular scene, and I can't remember the, the play, but the, part of the action was that um, a birthday cake gets served. Somebody comes out with a birthday cake and the scenes continue. Well, during the rehearsals, this one rehearsal anyway that I was observing, Instead of having a cake, a prop cake or something, they brought out a tray full of Hostess Twinkies. <laughs> Remember how old I am. <laughs> and the seed was sown, as that any job I could ever get that would allow me to eat free Twinkies is <laughs> what I want to do. Richard 